This video is brought to you by Zarkin Productions, an umbrella group composed of over 10 shows, and an archive of over 5,000 videos covering a wide variety of topics. Please go to zarkin.com for a complete listing of video links, social media feeds, and opportunities to support our content. Thank you for your time, and may I present another Zarkin production. Welcome to Virtual World Traveler. I am your camera cat showing you some of the amazing places I have seen. This is a video I made about Haunted New Toulouse 2 Hunt, by New Toulouse Parish, at Second Life. Meet the ghosts of New Toulouse, Louisiana. Wear your HUD, find all 20 ghosts, hear their stories, and then collect your rewards. Start by picking up your ghost hunters kit at the Beacon Spiritualist Institute, 23 Nightingale Street. Please join me as I explore haunted new to lose to hunt. Hello everyone, and welcome to a spooky hunt at New to Louise. The haunted new to Louise to hunt. And here we are outside the Beacon Spiritualist Institute. Uh, ex Scienta Lux. This is where we start our ghost hunting hunt. Find ourselves some ghosts. Never too late for some spooky spoos. Let's go on in, get her hut, and get her spooky on. And uh, apparently this is what we're looking for, possibly. This little glowy thing. There's the ghost hunter's kit. And it says begin here, so I guess we begin here. What happens if I click on you? Click. Nothing. Okay. <laughs> oh, that tickles! <laughs> yeah, the cute little spirit. Yes, I do. All right, so let's. I'm gonna grab a hut and put it on. Okay, here's some details about the hunt. Uh, wear the hut, probably very important. Uh, go to the first haunted place, number seven, Red Drum Place. I'll be going there here in a moment. Uh, find and touch the spirit there. Example is here at eight Hunt HQ. Looks like glowing spirit globe. So that little glowy thing right there. When you touch a spirit, it will be marked on your HUD, and you'll receive a note card containing the spirit's tail and the landmark to the next haunted place. When you've collected all 20 spirits, return to 23 Nightingale Street and go upstairs to the BSI Tea Room and Gift Area, so that's upstairs in this place, and collect your prizes by touching them while wearing the filled HUD. Note, if you crash while wearing the HUD, some data may be lost. It is therefore a good idea to remove the HUD periodically while hunting to set its state. Or just do the entire hunt all at once. So that would probably be a good idea too. So let's go to number 7, Red Drum Place. Okay, it looks like we have our first ghost right in front of us. So there's the ghost over there. <laughs> the FPS is hitting like single digits here I have no idea why see so I get like up to 90 over here but if I turn around oh shit does it ever drop so that's second life for you but anyway here's our first ghost should probably get out of here before I crash. Hello, Mr. Ghosty You. Sparkle, sparkle. And then click on you. Click. You found a spirit. You can see it. Number seven, Red Drum Place. Ghost Henry Apuente. Reported by Klaus Berzniak. Calling it an old haunt wasn't just a picturesque way to describe the way he felt about number seven Red Drum Place. 
Henry Aponte wasn't going to let a minor inconvenience like death stop him from residing there. The parson said he'd live on in his writings. Well, sure, but Henry wanted to listen to the rain on the windows. Rest in peace, they had said when they sent him off. Well, this was peace, staring out at the mist on the bayou. The new tenants would just have to put up with the unique aroma of his special tobacco blend, and as long as they left his old desk and piano there, he'd keep using them too. Uh, next stop, Fusilier Photography. Alrighty, let's, uh, let's have a look around. This is apparently the photography place. Trying to walk gently so as not to anger the, the lag monsters. see where my quarry is. It's over there, hiding. It's like, you can't see me, but I'm like, yes, I can. I sure can see you. Except I want to look around a little bit before I... Because the FPS here is somewhat decent, so... Well, I mean somewhat decent, I mean double digits. Which is a joke. Cool. I'm gonna get you a little sparkle, sparkle. As soon as I navigate around the furniture without killing myself. Sparkle, sparkle. Alright. Gonna click on you. Click. I found a spirit. Frenier Photography. Ghost Richard Maines. Reported by Agricola Philister. I could have a sir. He couldn't believe his luck when he saw the room. With a great view of the cemetery, this place was perfect for his laboratory. He even had, he had even sent for the special camera for photographing ghosts. And through the windows, he could even see the tomb where his friend Rick's bones were. Agricola and Richard Maines had bonded during Citizens League meetings and crew Garou events, and Agricola had been happy to cast his vote for Maines in the 1960 mayoral election. His joy at Rick's electoral victory soon turned to grief, as Maines died before he could take office. While setting up his photography lab, sometimes Agricola would talk to Rick, the way people will when visiting dead loved ones at the cemetery. One windy October night, Agricola passed by City Hall and went in to say hello to Mayor Godinot, who apparently was working late. But the man seated at the mayor's desk was none other than Richard Maines. Now Richard's ghost often visits Agricola at Red Drum Place, where they talk about old times. Next stop, Professor Inglewood's Grand Observatorium. Alright, here we are in a fairly interesting place with lots of really cool stuff. Thankfully it's a small room, so finding the ghosty goo really isn't that hard. Plus it helps to, you know, like for the thing to be a glowing poof ball. Glowing poof balls tend to be fairly easy to find.
Watch one of these end up being the YouTube thumbnail. Demonetized. Anyway. So some pretty cool stuff in here. Double head kitty. Double your meow. Double your cute. Meow, 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 meow. As I watch the FPS jerk up and down. Don't know if I took a took time to look at any of this stuff the last time I was through on the new to Lee's hunt. Ugh. And the anatomy charts. Not my thing. Kind of degrees. Oh, yep, dropping into single digits now. Great. I don't know. Neutralies, um, a lot of cool stuff here. Always been a real ass kicker when it comes to my computer's ability to handle it. So I'm really looking forward to getting a better computer at some point. So places like this aren't quite so problematic to film in. Because there is a lot of neat stuff here. It's just, you know, my FPS takes a takes a nose dive, don't you know? There's another double head kitty. Some butterflies. Here's a vampire butt. There's a froggy in there. Right up top of the giraffe head is our ghost. Professor Inglewood's Grand Observatorium, Ghost Colette du Fox, reported by Henry Payne. Colette du Fox sat at her vanity, painting her face, preparing for the long night ahead. Next door, she could hear her neighbor, Miss Lolly McDaniels, arguing with a man over the price for their impending transaction. Looking around the shabby crib where she piled her trade, she sighed and pounded on the thin wall, and to her surprise, it worked. The arguing stopped. Colette picked up her perfume, and just as she spritzed herself, a gunshot pierced the quiet. As Colette crumpled to the floor, motorily wounded, her perfume bottle slipped from her hand, shattering. To this day, the scent of lavender perfume fills the air whenever Colette's ghost appears. And our next stop is Kilkesh Chooses. Right, not too much to see at this location. So I'm just gonna, gonna gently turn. <laughs> 
on my tank treads to over here where the ghosty is hiding behind here. Hello? Ghosty? I found another spirit. Except. Quest next choices. Ghost. Empty. Antoinette. Reported by Close Berzlack. How can I be expected to rest in peace with all those ants scratching and scuttling? They are coming for me. They won't have me. They won't carry me in pieces down into their burrows. It's all very well for the living who can squish them and spray them. Am I... Am I just to wait here in the dark until they come from my dust? They make what's left of my skin crawl. As long as they have a bit of fruit to tempt them, perhaps they will leave me alone. I can't rest. I have to get up. Tonight, I will not go far. Perhaps I can linger in the little shop over the way. The next place we go is the Chapel of Our Lady of Bourbon Street. Okay, so here we are, the, this fairly large building. Let's go on in. Doop, 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 doop. Alright. And up here is where... The ghosty is. I found a spirit. A chapel of Our Lady of Bourbon Street. Ghost Glory O'Sullivan. Reported by Quiet Wonder. Sometimes the church organ seems to play itself. It's no feat of technical wizardry, as the instrument is perfectly ordinary. They say it's the ghost of Glory O'Sullivan, who for years taught piano and elocution in support of her infirm mother. She often played the church organ on Sundays. One day came the announcement in the paper, Miss Glory's upcoming marriage to one Philip Danforth, a well-to-do California citrus grower. Miss Glory took to wearing face powder and spent hours putting together her trousseau. They found her dead on the chapel floor one morning, wearing her mother's wedding gown. It came out that Glory had been corresponding with Danforth via post after having been introduced by a matchmaking agency. One look at her photo, and he was head over heels, he said, and there was no choice but to get hitched pronto. Could you send some money for his ticket? His funds were all tied up in the market, or something like that. They'd be married at her church and honeymoon somewhere sinfully luxurious. She could choose where. After she sent the money, he failed to arrive or send word. The night her growing suspicion became certainty, you could hear the music coming from the chapel. They say she's still there. Next one is Belina's Tarrant Tea Room. Here we have another interesting place in New Toulouse. Got some stuff still out here from Halloween. Nothing wrong with that. Especially if it's pretty cool. Yeah. Plus my FPS is actually up in the 40s, so that's kind of cool. So we are at the Tarot Reading Tea Room. There you got a card bunny. Let's go on in. See what kind of spookiness. Open the door first. That might help. So we're looking for A ghosty goo. It's probably behind that divider over there. That would be my guess. Probably 
price for reading 600 lindens shit you behind here nope they're not behind here dang I know where's that kitty are you a tarot reading kitty do you read tarot cards I can has hamburger. All right. So there's been a clever hiding of some sort going on here. It's in there with the fish. Nope. Is in here. I can't open it, so I guess not. There's another little kitty. Look at that. I get a little bit more clever with their hidings. curtains nope okay how much you bet it's not signed hang on okay so sometimes you have to log out and log back in uh, to re res to make these things appear or maybe I just didn't see it <laughs> either way the uh, little ghosty is behind the chair right there click on that Bolina's Tarot Tea Room Ghost Ismin boarded by Diogenes to Fizzer Dracodurk. The child is mean. The child is mean. Struck silent and still by grief, having but two weeks prior stood before the pine casket of her father, who had passed into nescence after a bout of yellow fever, watched with knowing eyes as her mother, the widow Oobspin, gazed into an oval mirror and dabbed a light rouge across her otherwise pale cheeks, preparing for an evening outing at the Bourbon Street Opera House with Mr. P.T. Bursillo. Don't look at me like that, Alvina, said her mother. This night is very important for both of us. As her mother exited into the moonlight, Alvina heard the high laughter of Mr. Bursillo smelled pungent cigar smoke mingling with the crisp evening air and caught sight of his plump hand sliding around her mother's waist. Us, Alvina thought, the word shifting through a myriad unacceptable permutations in her mind. The pug-nosed Mr. Priscio, she determined, could never make an us. An hour after seeing her mother for the last time, Alvina allowed Tante Luisa to tuck her into bed. After the near-deaf woman returned to the front of the long shotgun house to resume her reading, Avina slipped silently out of her bedroom window and approached a live oak tree overlooking the misted bracken estuary, determined to meet her father again. Her mother nestled in the arms of Mr. Percio through the night and, on her return home the following morning, had to be informed by a hysterical Tante Luisa that the child is mean was dead, found swaying on a skeletal branch of the live oak by a crawfishman at dawn. Devastated, the widow Obspin fled down... Devastated, the widow Obspin fled town and was never heard from in New Toulouse again, though gossip filtered down from Bainville Parish that grief stalked her and led to an equally tragic end. Perhaps more substantial than gossip, though, 
are the repeated reports of eerie experiences around the Terra House on Shotgun Row, the slight sound of skipping footsteps on the front porch and banquet, a heart-rending burst of sobbing near the back of the house, and most disturbing, the appearance of a small child in pale pink nightgown, eyes milk-white, neck bent severely, holding the hand of a gaunt man on the bouncing branches of a tree overlooking the river. Next stop, Old Spanish Stable. Alright, so here we are at the stables and we have a dragon horse. Again, these are breedable horses in Second Life. This one just happens to be a dragon horse. Not sure if it flies or whatnot, but here it is. I'm not sure if... Uh, I think they do have horse races in Second Life. It's not a scene I'm familiar with at all. But I guess it's a thing that is done. Because, you know, here's some... Here's some awards. So, Crown Cup. Calvico Resident. Uh, summer 2017. Oh, that's a neat... That's a recent one, then. This one's Fall of 2015. So, yeah. Um, so, races are definitely a thing. She won this one with La Kabuki Doll. And this one was... One with La Masai Warrior. So, yeah, um, again, not not something I'm at all familiar with, but apparently horse racing is a thing. Or at least that's the implication, anyway. ABC Licensed Jockey 2013. This is to certify that Calvico Resident is an officially licensed jockey for ABC Awesome Breed Creation, stated August 3rd, 2012. Signed, Awesome Breed Resident. Awesome Breed Creations. And there's another one here. Also licensed 2013. Uh, Pazo Pestana. There's the, there's a feather. I think that's probably something along with some other hunt, possibly. And you're right, the ghosty is hiding under the bed. Let's click on that. Old Spanish Stable, Ghost Emil Sanstere, reported by Pazu Pastina. Paso Pastana, Pedron of the Pedron, Pedron, whatever, of the old Spanish stable, hired a blacksmith who had appeared asking for work. In a Creo Patois, he said he'd escaped from a Haitian priest practicing dark voodoo and was searching for the woman he loved. She'd been empowered by good voodoo and transformed into an owl, flown away. His quest had led him to other Creole people in New Toulouse Bayou who knew the story and told him that an owl had been seen in the hayloft of the old Spanish stable. One night, Pazo was awakened by a rustling sound in the hayloft. Looking down from his balcony, he noticed him climbing the ladder to the loft. Pazo knew of the owl that had made its home in the loft, and was grateful that it had kept the mice in check. Curious, but unalarmed, he went back to bed. Waking at dawn, he looked out the window and saw... Emil climbed back down and busy himself with the smithing chores of the day. 
One day, he noticed that Emil had not begun working at the forge, and he went to his room to see if he was well. Emil wasn't in his bed, but he didn't find. But he did find an owl feather. Perplexed, he climbed up into the loft to find that the owl was no longer there. A few days later, word got to him that Emil has been seen on the Bayou Ferry with a beautiful young woman. They were said to have taken ferry, but with no indication of their destination. And next place is Weed's Vegetarian Public House. So here is Weed's Vegetarian Public House. As the name suggests, you can get some vegetarian goodies here. Or just alcohol. Because <laughs> they have a bar here. There's tea upstairs, though. My guess is that is where we need to go. But for a sampling of their fare, there you go. There's a salad. And some flowers in it. Hope you like flowers. Alright. So I try to make my way up top the lag is strong here as I'm hitting single digits up we go aha I have made it to the second level and up here we have even better fare not sure what these are, but they look, they look edible. <laughs> There's some pears over here. Assortment of other stuff that refuses to res. And there's our quarry. The ghost of you sitting on the table. Boink. Weeds Vegetarian Public House. Ghost. Alva Ham Slice. Wild Hog of Shotgun Row. Reported by Ramiri Beat It. At one time, Shotgun Row was just a pastoral, swampy grazing land. This was before the real estate developers dumped tons of water hyacinth mulch into landfill. Princess Hamslice was a local wild hog just minding her own business. One day she was snarfing around for bull grapes and chanterelles, a favorite food of wild hogs that actually contains quite a bit of protein. Just then, old Sergeant Wiki Foo, singing the song of the Battle of Chickamauga, blasted poor Princess Hamslice through her shank, sending her into eternity. But word has it that on Sunday mornings, reminders of the wild hog of Shotgun Row remain redolent in the air. Next up, Lynn Laundry. Alright, here we are at Lynn Laundry. Let's go on in and find the spookies. They got a luck cat and a bunch of laundry because it's a laundry place. And there's the spooky. Quick. Lynn Laundry, Ghost the Bed Sheet. Reported by Mia Lynn. Every Halloween, it's the same. Miss Lynn and her staff have to watch for children who like to steal the boarding house bed sheets off the clothesline and run around pretending to be ghosts. Annoying the neighbors and ruining the clean laundry. Last year, Miss Lynn decided she had enough and resolved to catch them at it and make them work to pay for the damage. So she hid behind a tree and waited. Sure enough, around dusk, a bed sheet in the shape of a person ran across the road, and then another. As she got ready to jump out from behind the tree with her lantern and scold the pranksters, she heard screaming. The figures in the bed sheets were chasing three barefoot children. Uh, down the road. Uh, Miss Lynn dropped her lantern and raced after them. When she caught hold of one of the figures, she pulled off the sheet 
and there was no one underneath. The other sheet fell to the ground in a dusty pile. The children ran away crying in terror. Miss Lynn let her neighbor sprinkle holy water in the wash water, and she never takes laundry off the line after dusk, just in case. Next stop, the Rive de Joac Café. All right, here we are. This pretty cool little place got a Jack Bunny right there. A Jack Bunny on the picture over there. We got the Saw Doll. Some more other stuff. Marijuana Satisfaction. All kinds of neat stuff. Probably some weed brownies right there. But here's the little ghosty. So I'm going to click, 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 clicky. I found a spirit. Le Rive de Jacques Café. Goes to Gaston Beaubrant. Reported by Berlina Gorval. Morning light was peeking through the cafe windows. Gaston played one last hand at cards, trying to redeem himself from losing badly since yesterday afternoon. All the tired and drunken card players heard was a shotgun noise through the screen door, and Gaston was sprawled face down on the table, still holding the card that would have made him finally win the Ace of Spades. On those dark, still nights in the cafe, you can still hear Gaston's sobbing, and the sound of cards being shuffled. Next up, the voice of the people. All right, here we are at this reporter's office. Got some cool stuff around here. Got a typewriter. So if you may not recognize what these one of these things are. I used to have a royal typewriter. Heavy-ass thing. All metal. Punch rolls through the paper. Comment below if you remember what a typewriter is. Voice of the People, the Lumberjack's new name. Plenty of alcohol around here. Green alcohol werewolf moonshine. I suppose it helps in doing the news. Well, there's the sparkle sparkles. Voice of the People, Ghost Harold Hill, reported by Eve White Rose. He sang so unctuously, I need you badly, badly, Madam Librarian Marion. If I stumbled and I busted my, what you may call it, I could lie on your floor unnoticed, till my body had turned to carrion, Madam Librarian. Plenty of books around, but she wasn't a librarian. She was a journalist, a card carrying. Uh, IWW member and she'd heard about this fellow and what he'd got away with upriver in Iowa and really carrion and librarian so she flung a handy rhyming dictionary at him caught him in the temple and he dropped down dead the local constabulary was sympathetic they'd also heard about this so-called professor so he, he died by book 
Next up, Lisa's Books. Okay, here we are at Lisa's Books. The Ghost of Lisa Delis Books and Poems. I can't see it you up here. Kitty could use a hamburger or two, probably. I haven't muted at the moment because there's some kind of calliope music playing in the background somewhere that I can't turn off. But I already found the ghosty goo. It's right there. How about that? But she does have books. Like, there's a book. Puppet Master, Black Velvet. Uh, book publishing is a thing in Second Life. So, if you want to become an author, that is certainly something that you can endeavor in, in uh, Second Life. There are communities that support that for poetry and other works of literature. Lisa's Books, Ghost, Lisa, imagine that, reported by Lisa Velez. Lisa was a girl working as a night angel with a cruel boss that one night slaughtered her with a knife. She was very fond of reading, so sometimes you can see pages flip as if in the wind, only indoors with the windows closed. Then you know it might be her still trying to forget and instead escape into the worlds of books. Next stop, Galleria del Gato, future home. And when they meant future home, they weren't kidding. Because <laughs> uh, there's nothing here. Not until they put everything together, I, I suppose. Well, here's, here's some pictures, some paintings already. Uh, there's that. And more of that when everything's put together, I suppose. But we are looking for ghosties. And there's a ghostie right over there. Let's go grab that ghostie. Ha, ghosty, you are grabbed. All right. Galleria del Gato. Genevieve, reported by Tiger Freenote. Her name was Genevieve, and she was older than the stones and wooden beams around her. Little wonder, then... How she missed the creaking and the whooshing wind and drafts when it was all taken down. She'd seen it all, happy times as well as sad. Booms, floods, hurricanes, people dying and being born over. Luckily, Genevieve appreciated beauty and death as much as she had in life. Soon the same stones and beams would be rebuilt around her, breathing new life into her small part of the city and she would share her home with other items and objects of beauty, lifting the hearts of others as she had done in life. Next stop, Carrie's Bar and Dance. All right, here we are at Carrie's Bar. A fine establishment to get some fine drinks. Also, to get some fine gumbo, too. Look at that. That looks delicious. Mm. 
think they have live entertainment here. Like live performances and whatnot. There's our ghosty hovering over a margarita or something. With a, yeah, it's some olives floating in there. Next to a bottle of absence. Absinthe. Carrie's Barn Dance, Ghost Kareem, reported by Carmia Holzine. My twin brother, Kareem, never found his place in life. After a serious week-long bout of drinking up all the liquor at my bar, he disappeared. Some say he fell off the Bayou Ferry and drowned. Customers have reported a solitary figure sitting at the bar, drinking by himself right about midnight, and they think it might be him. All I know is he never pays his tab, and he has been known to get belligerent and throw rocks on the roof and olives at the customers. Best to keep a safe distance if you see him. He's no longer alive. Next, we'll be going to the Green Iron Ferry. Alright, here we are at the Green Iron Ferry, where you can get some ab from absinthe. Absinthe, however you pronounce it. And there's the ghost right there. But you don't have to search, just you know, look across the way. around a little bit since FPS isn't too bad here. We got some fruit cake. Looks like it's got an inch or person baked into it. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Is that associated with something? I think that might be another hunt. Looking for a little plastic baby. Got some absinthe, some beer, some other stuff. Plenty of alcohol. Lots of alcohol in this town. If you want to get drunk, this is blaze to go. Got some pictures of Louisiana. Not all of them on a render, but there's some pictures here. <coughs> I found a spirit. The Green-Eyed Ferry, Ghost Beauregard Bodin, reported by Francisca Alva. No one had ever accused Beauregard of being a brainy, but one day in nineteen, one day in 1899 he outdid himself. He heard there was money to be made in smuggling moonshine. Forget the fact that everyone in Bayou smuggled moonshine. Forget the fact that most folks did it by boat. Bew decided to tunnel under the misted bracket. Might have got away with it, too, but as he reached the levee behind the Green-Eyed Ferry, where he hoped to sell a lot of the hooch, the ground gave way beneath him, and Bew and his hooch were no more. When the moon is new, you can still hear it old Bew a-weepin' and a-wallin' in the yard behind the ferry. Folks who drink there reckon that if that good old corn tastes a mite watery, that's Bew's stock that went floatin' down the mist of bracket. And the next place is Kate Chopin Library. All right, so here we are at the Kate Chopin uh, New to Lose Library. 
which is a boat on the river. So, a very portable library. Let's go on in here. Not a very big library, but hey, some libraries better than none. There's a kitty, look at that. Hello, oh, kitty. It's found its camera. Fiction, nonfiction, poetry, the living dead, Louisiana lore. There's something up there. Yeah, that's from another hunt. Kate Chopin Library, Ghost Cat and Mouse, reported by Yvonne Follett. Some lucky ghosts do get to travel post-mortem. The library boat serves the inhabitants of New Toulouse Bayou, which has the highest rural literacy rate in the region. Alexander, the library cat, staunch defender of books, one day spotted a mouse on deck and pounced. Just as the, book, just as the boat struck some hidden debris, rocking and throwing cat and mouse overboard to the waiting jaws of an alligator. In the afterlife, the two animals have become great pals, but when the library runs the stretch of bayou where they became gator chow all those years ago, they revert to hunter and hunted once again. So next stop is Swamp Manor Inn. There's a lot of cute kitties at this place. All kinds of cute kitties. The ghost is at that lantern in the middle, so pretty easy to find. Got some sausage and toast. Looks pretty good to me. Got a going game of race, I guess. I don't know. Got me and Drake. Gotta cover your ears with that one. We got some spoons with some, I don't know. Looks like a miniature book. Is that another hunt thing? Stranger's Pocket Diary? Okay. Probably. Some matchsticks. Alright. I hear a cute little kitty. <laughs> Give us again the apothecary chat noir. It's a kitty. <laughs> so cute. Look at him. They're adorables. <laughs> oh. <laughs> the adorables. Probably don't want to be messing with that. That praying mantis that's about as big as you, though. Probably not a good idea. So cute. So cute. So cute. So cute. We got some more kitties. Another kitty over here trying to get a fishy. <coughs> like, what's that fishy doing? I'm gonna get a fishy. 
The fish is like, oh, why? <laughs> so cute. Some kind of vampire flower. Feed me some more. All right, let's pick up the ghosty. Beep. Swamp Manor Inn, Ghost Jaquandra, reported by Liz Valiz. Uh, when you're at Swamp Manor, you surely notice that green glow all over it? Well, it is a secret, actually, but I will tell you what that is about. In former days, there was a little swamp girl who was fascinated by strange barrels floating around in the water. Her name was Jaquandra. When she was around two years old, she lost her grandfather. He was a professor and did experiments. His laboratory blew up one day, and after that, no one ever saw him again. Jacandra was always wondering what really happened, and she thought that maybe he was trapped inside one of the barrels she saw floating around, and that she also found under the house itself. So one day, she climbed into one of them, looking for him, and after this, she was never seen again. We are of the strongest belief that she is around, though, and is causing that green light. Next place is... Next stop, Harm's Way. All right, here we are at Harm's Way, which is an excellent store to go to if you're looking for some uh, Western attire. Uh, they got plenty of Western outfits for whatever Western style you wish to have. Two levels of it, but... It takes forever for stores to render, so we're not going to poke around too much. Instead, we're just going to go over here and poke out this ghost. Harm's Way Ghost and Antony Chevalier, reported by Brienne. Back in the day, the Chevalier family owned a great piece of swampland hereabouts. They also owned a lot of people, and Pa Chevalier wasn't known for his gentle disposition, if you know what I mean. After one of his rages, a slave went to the conjure woman and got a curse put on them, Chevaliers. That's when the zombies came to buy you. The two Chevalier brothers, Antony and Bernard, were out hunting one day when a zombie rose up from the coulee and bit Bernard. Antony put down the zombie with a neat shot, but his brother... Already was turned dead alive, and after Bernard attacked him and had to be put down too, well, Antony must have looked at the bite on his arm, and maybe he could already feel himself starting to slip when he turned the gun on himself. Pa Chevalier sold all the land and took what was left of his family somewhere far away. I don't know if they're still cursed, but there are still zombies on this land, and some nights you can hear the ghost of Antony cussing and crying over here where he died. Next stop, the Old Furnier Homestead. Okay, here we are at the Old Homestead. Here's a little gator. Hello, Mr. Gator, what you doing? Hey, I'm a gator. So there's Mr. Gator. And over here we have Death. Just kind of standing out here. It's like, hey, I'm Death. Look at me. I got an hourglass. Don't worry about anything. I'm just death. Standing out here being death. See you later. I'll still be death. So, let's go on into the uh, old homestead, which has a mausoleum right next to it. So... 
not much of a sunny outlook, these people, to just like, we'll build our house here. We'll build the mausoleum right next to it. You only have to cart us ten feet when you have to bury us. Huh. There's a little ghosty. The Old Fournier Homestead, Ghost Amy and Agnes Fournier, reported by Andrea Jones. Nathan and Amy Fournier lived a simple life on the bayou. Their house was small, but, their, but they were a family, and it was their home. They made the best of life, and soon little Agnes came along. Then the fever came. Nathan left to go find the doctor and medicine to save his family, promising to return quickly. He never did. The furnishings are gone, the house and yard are decayed. You can still see Amy carrying little Agnes around her home, waiting for Nathan. Next stop, the houseboat Narcissi number three. Okay, this one, last one is a little tricky because it isn't actually in this building, but let's go on in here for a moment because there's a floating carrot here, which is obviously for some other hunt of some sort, I think. So bunniness so there's a there's a carrot for you it's also a neat little music box which I will not be clicking on for obvious reasons alright so let's go out to where the actual location of the guest is there it is Trees in the way. There we go. The Houseboat Narcissi Number Three Ghost Traveling Ruby, reported by Henry Godinot. Uh, Ellen first saw the image in one of her grandmother's save postcards. The old hand tinted postcard had been mailed in 1870 and it showed a well-dressed middle-aged woman wearing a teardrop ruby on a necklace keenly looking straight at the camera the woman had purpose and more her piercing look seemed to weaken ellen as she stared at it after seeing that image ellen began to believe that she saw the woman in other places in an oil portrait dated 1820 the woman was older but it was clearly the same woman and necklace and the same piercing, weakening look. Ellen's knees weakened when she found a modern photograph of the woman taken from the deck of the SS France in the port of New Toulouse. The photo showed a striking young woman with an evil, leering smile. The young woman looked straight into Ellen's soul, and her unmistakable necklace decorated her beautiful neck. Ellen was found dead last week in front of her broken, full-length mirror, the coroner said that Ellen's body was withered and wrinkled and weighed about 40 pounds. She was only 20. If you found 20 ghosts, you're all done. Head to the BSI tea room and gift area and claim your rewards. Okay, so here we are in the prize room. As you can see, there's quite a few prizes to pick up in this free hunt. So I'm going to grab them all and then put them out on display and uh, do the prize reveal for the hunt. So let's cut to that. Alright, so a lot of great prizes for this hunt. We'll start from left to right. Uh, over here we have a really cool picture of a hotel. Uh, this one is from Spirit Photography by Fuels here. So, got a picture of a skeleton in a hotel. Uh, this one is from the Green Eyed Fairy. You get a cute little snaily snail for your garden collection. Uh, this one is the New Toulouse Gift Hunt. A very nice 
I think it's I think it's completely mesh. Yeah, it's it's definitely mesh. Um, Lantern with light has mo animated moths on it, which is pretty cool. Uh, it doesn't yeah. appear to turn on or off that I can see, but very well detailed, very well detailed. I actually have one of these uh, outside of Second Life, in real life, if you will, and uh, it definitely matches the actual configuration, so great detailing on that. Definitely a cool thing to have. Uh, this one is by Go Nuts Gift. And if you remember that that ghost tale where the woman was haunted by a woman in a photograph and they had and the woman in the photograph had this gem, uh, that this is what the gem looks like apparently. It's very pretty. So if you're looking for some nice filled with gray jewelry there you go uh, this one is from that weeds place and from weeds you get uh, a bunch of artwork for your home you know, Marinicora, fairy cakes some pictures uh, stuff vegetables zodiac pure coffee absinthe fairy and this big old thing, which is pretty cool. So there's that. Uh, going down here in front of me. Uh, this is from Voice of the People. Uh, you get some, I guess, kind of like sardines. So White Rose, Choice Bits, Caribbean Kraken, and Extra Caddy Atlantic Sardines. Uh, the chair I'm sitting in and the, feet, the barrel I have my foot up on is from In Harm's Way, matching their western theme. Uh, this box, Prize for Carrie's Bar and Dance, is actually a scarf. So, there's a cool scarf. They have different colors. And a fedora. So, there's a fedora for you. I don't quite have it fitted on my head correctly, but there you go. Uh, this big thing, which barely fits inside the house, is a Haunted NT2 Hunt Prize box. So this is like a bayou prison. It's like a floating prison, I guess. You can stick people in there and ha ha! your prisoner now is and stuff this one's from a Choice choices so this one gives you original vintage decor items by Prograin Claus Brzniak and a bunch of stuff in there there's a radio for you Actually, I think this is just an advertisement. So, that's an advertisement, and there's your actual prize, the radio. I think it turns on. Nope, nope, nope. Nope, no, no, no. no. <laughs> okay, so it, it plays music, which we're not going to play. Um, okay, this is from... Uh, Liz's uh, place where all the books and stuff you can get these which are, I guess are escort cards so you click on it you get a card uh, this one is New to Lose Hunt Gift 2 so this is a blackboard I love you poem Roses are red, violets are blue, sugar is sweet, and I love you. And this one is the Beacon Spiritualist Institute. This is for Haunted New Toulouse. 
If you click on it, it opens up a link which you can go to to get more details about Haunted New Toulouse. It's kind of like a link book. So, all in all, pretty good hunt. Uh, it is free, uh, so it costs you nothing. Um, it's a lot of fun. I certainly enjoyed it, and I hope you did too, watching this video. And uh, you get some pretty cool stuff out of it too. So, uh, thank you for watching, and I'll see you on the next one.